Welcome to another epic Elite audio unboxing video and interestingly we've had some feedback in some of our previous unboxing videos, we've had a few suggestions of things you'd like us to try. Um, one of our clients suggested that we try and unbox by throwing the slicer and vicer at the box uh, and see if we can actually get it to cut down neatly. Um, Grant's already shaking his head. Um, and he's holding up health and safety warning signs. Um, but I would say it's Elite Audio, not Hogwarts. Um, we don't have magic. Well, actually, the Stanley 99E is probably as close as you'll get to a magic slicer and dicer. And I've actually, all, you know, we have no affiliation with Stanley whatsoever. They've probably got no idea that if I, you know, we, we promote the 99E. What I'd ask you to do is nip out to your local hardware store request the 99E, just try it for yourself, you know, seal something up, just unbox it again. Just, you know, just so you can, in fact, I would encourage you to unbox things while we're unboxing things. We'd have like a, a you know, a communal. An um, unbox off. Yeah. A, a box off. Um, can I, it's, that's more like a boxing match, to be honest. Oh, okay. um, anyway, okay. a box off has its place, I guess, probably 99Es aren't the place for that. That could be even more dangerous than us throwing a 99E across our listening room. Anyway. Today we have a firm favourite in the Elite Audio uh, product stable, and this is by the Italian company Audia Flight. Now, Audia have been around for quite some time. You've probably seen some of their products already in either our Lifting the Lid videos or on previous unboxing videos. This, what we have here today, is the Audia Flight FL Phono. Now, if I can just bring this round, can I probably see the Audia uh, label there? You can see it's actually come straight from Audi to ourselves. It's a moving magnet, moving coil, photo stage. It's UK model, obviously. Um, there's quite a few reviews on this, and what's quite interesting, and, and some people uh, are always saying, oh, when's the upgrade coming? When's the new one coming? Uh, in my opinion, there's no need uh, for strap. Well, there is need for strapping, hence I've just flung it across the uh, listening room floor. Um, if something works extremely well, and there is no easy path to upgrade it to make it sound even better than it does without a significant additional cost, why change it? And I think Audi, are, I think, is the epitome of that type of philosophy because if you read the reviews on this phono stage, you will see straight away that it has some fantastic uh, feedback. We have sold a lot of these uh, over the years and it's something that certainly our clients seem to love. Now, in terms of where it's at, in, in the sort of pecking order, it sort of sits between the sort of four and five thousand pounds retail mark. The build quality is amazing, as you'll see in a second when I actually get to the internal aspects of the box. Um, you can see the 99E, it's like, it's like a hot knife through butter, is the only way I would describe it. And they're kind of, you know, when you sort of slice down the top of the silicon, you do get that kind of sensation that it's just all oh, maybe a bit too easy to open the box to the right way. Anyway, but looks of things uh, it's set in a really dangerous place right now, nobody realises that. Um, one slight error, I don't know if you've ever seen knife throwing at the circus. Um, funny, Grant's moved, that's odd. Grant has moved. Um, but, you know, the, the, I'm not blindfold, which actually maybe we should do. How about a uh, blindfold unboxing grant? Now there's, that's never been done before and that could actually work out quite interesting. I'm sure you guys watching this would like to see us try to unbox something blindfold, especially with a lethal blade in my hand. Anyway, we are now finished with the Stanley 99E. You'll be disappointed because, unlike other videos where I just generally just chuck it across the room onto the couch, I am, Grant keeps saying to me, we can't keep doing this, it's setting a bad example, but encouraging people to throw dangerous weapons <laughs> keeps moving further away from the away. Anyway, I am on advice, um, both from our uh, solicitors, our health and safety executive, and from Grant's uh, wife, that um, I, I need to take more care with any. As you can see, I have retracted the blade, but you know, to double safety. I'm going to place it very carefully across there. Wow, I did a triple, that did a triple salco backflip and then straight into the couch, you missed it and it was a shame. Right, the guy can come over and see the contents of the Audi Flight Phono Stage box. So, we have the trusty Audi Flight owner's manual. In here you will find everything that you need to have in order to set this amazing Phono Stage up. If uh, Italian is your first language, then you'll find that there's plenty in here to keep you occupied and uh, if Italian's not your first language, you will need to move on uh, further into the manual to 
until you get to the part which is nicely written in English, which always helps. Um, setting something up in Italian doesn't necessarily mean you'll get an Italian sound, but there is, without a doubt, a distinct Italian flavour with this phono station. Now, Audi, uh, as a company, have a reputation for building equipment that sounds... Uh, <laughs> to... <laughs> you ever take something that phone and go back in anyway? Um, that sounds big and bold, um, good deep bass. You will also find that the... But it is, there's a delicacy about it as well, and, and it's, it's... If you like very deep visceral bass from your analogue, then without doubt this is a phono stage that should be on your shortlist. There was a review that I read recently where it said that there was two outstanding qualities that this phono stage had. One was its ability to dig deep into the recording and extract bass levels that you might not normally expect to get from a solid state phono stage. The other was its ability to separate everything out beautifully, which this phono stage does. It, it also, you can play it loud, it maintains its composure when the recording gets very complex, it still maintains that composure. And again, this is something we've been fed back regularly from clients. So, um, you can see there's two boxes in here. One is the phono stage, one is the power supply. There's also an umbilical which is hardwired into the phono stage. As you can see here, it does come with a power cord, which is a Shuko version now. Um, we do supply an adapter with this, so you can use it, or we'd, we'd probably replace it with a High Diamond 2 uh, power cord, which is a kind of equivalent uh, spec. We, or we can supply it with the Shuko. We have clients that use Shuko uh, main distribution or, or Shuko um, equipped uh, power conditioners. So if you were buying one of these, we would ask you before we shipped it exactly what you wanted us to include. So there's a lot of flexibility in there. Um, so I'm just going to lift this out of the box now. Tell me, tell me now, there's a lot of heft, which is a word that's often used in audio circles because most bits of audio equipment have a certain degree of heft involved. So I'm going to put this down here and I'm going to just put the microphone back in the box. So very carefully I'm just going to pull this apart because the, the, the power supply acts as a lot of weight in it and um, you can't actually see the sort of level of heft, but trust me, there's a decent amount of inertia there just by the sheer mass of what's in there. Um, I'm now going to extract the follow stage and I need to sort of carefully thread the umbilical through from the other side of the foam. You can tell, I mean, that it's double boxed. Uh, a lot of manufacturer that uses expanded foam rather than polystyrene um, or other means of packing. Uh, you need something that can actually absorb uh, impact, particularly when you've got sort of weighty items that, that sort of generate their own level of inertia uh, in transit. And also then to top it all off, they have double wrapped each component. Um, firstly in foam and then secondly in clear polythene. So I'm just going to let you get into here and let you see it get comfortable on the floor here. And no doubt Grant will probably speed this up so that you don't have to sit here. You see, I was a bit hasty. No, I wasn't hasty throwing the, the 99E across the showroom. A great risk to life and limb. And uh, just sort of talk amongst yourselves for a moment. I'll just work my way into this uh, well-packaged uh, Audi Flight Foam Power Supply. We're almost there. I should be able to open it with the next extraction of there we go. Perfect, right, so the uh, it's a very high spec power supply. You can uh, see the build on it is pretty amazing actually. There, there's the front panel is beautifully finished. The machining on that is as close to perfect as you will see from any manufacturer. And um, the one thing that I do like about Audi Flight and all their products is the build quality is, um, <laughs> it's always interesting why, why um, the things that manufacturers put on the labels to put in the box. Um, if you're Chinese, this will make a lot of sense. Um, but it's saying, do not use knife, cutter, or sharp objects to open this box. I think what it means is the packet, because the box will all be open. So Grant's handing me the shit this time, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Just not to use it, Grant, not to. Um, 
if they mean the box, it's too late. <laughs> I've already done that. So it's kind of um, closing the stable door after the horse's bolt. But they don't mean that. Literally, I mean, if you cut into this, there's, there's a high chance you're going to damage or scratch the chassis. Um, often, as we would say, uh, please do not eat the contents of this. Um, I have seen circus acts, um, along with knife throwing, where they do eat metal objects. Probably eating this is not the right thing to do. Um, they, they have out there have really wrapped this very tightly. In fact, given the time of year and Christmas just been round the corner, Grant probably doesn't like me saying that because he hopes we can use it this video any time of year, but Christmas is literally weeks away as I am unwrapping this. And I think many of us could take a lesson from Audi about how to really properly wrap a present. Uh, this will probably take about the boxing bait to get into it. So that's that part gone and it's going to find the quickest way. I don't want to damage the phone. You can see they've um, left the little cutout part there for the umbilical for the power supply. Having an external power supply in a folding stage does make a lot of sense if you think about it. You're working with very low voltages from cartridges. The last thing you want internally inside the main phone stage itself is a lot of RFI and EMI uh, or even cross voltage interference, or cross electrical interference, I should say, um, flying around. Um, you can see the inputs here. Uh, there's there's three separate inputs. Uh, sorry, two separate inputs. Big pardon. Um, and also balanced output and a uh, single ended output. Behind here, which is held on just by I can actually unscrew these. In fact, let you see. Um, is where you make the dip switch adjustments to set the loading for your cartridge or cartridges if you're using this on a say perhaps a, a double turntable setup or even a setup where you're using two uh, individual tone arms with different cartridges which some people do um, I've obviously not unscrewed that one far enough there we go so in there you can see that uh, it can be configured for moving magnet uh, or moving coil uh, each input, one is set for moving magnet, one is set for moving coil, and then these simply remove and re you replace these jumpers uh, to suit the impedance and load requirements of your individual cartridges. The, the thing I like about this phono stage, um, for me personally, is that it gives a very full account and it's got a huge dynamic range, which a lot of phono stages don't have. And I know it sounds almost like stating the obvious because analog is something that's meant to give us that you know, the dynamic range that sometimes we, we find is compressed and digital. And yes, you can get recordings that sound compressed either analog or digital. However, when we did the Ascot show recently and we were comparing the same track digitally versus analog, the difference was quite noticeable, probably more than people would still realise. And again, it does show there's a lot of life left in analog in fact, a lot of life because it's a kind of a growing genre. People are going back uh, to vinyl faster than they ever have before. And when you have devices like the Audio Flight to replay your, your beautiful vinyl collection and connect to your uh, beautiful phone state, uh, your turntable, you can start to understand why. So there we go. That is the unboxing of the Audio Flight FL1 phone stage. We will probably uh, have it connected up at some point. Um, I'll straighten up. Obviously, the years are taking their toll on, on my frame. Uh, so, thanks for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions for things you'd like to watch us unbox, maybe we could box up some members of staff and unbox them. Or you have to guess who's in the box. We might have a prize for that. I mean, guess which member of staff is in the box. We'll obviously, we'll have to leave them there until people guess. But we'll also put breathe holes in and chuck some bits of food in to make sure that they, they get through the process to, to you guess who it is. They can't come out until someone guesses it right, but then there's only. Well, anyway, it wouldn't take long. Uh, please also subscribe to our newsletter because within there you will find some very exclusive newsletter only offers. Uh, please follow us on social media. Uh, all our videos appear there first, generally, and there's also things like special offers. We have quite a variety of uh, interesting uh, audio file and musical posts on Facebook and Connie will be the person you'll interface on there. She deals with all the social media aspects. So if you want to have a chat about what we're doing, what we're up to, or just generally say hi, we'd love to hear from you. So please make a destination point on our social media pages. Thanks for watching today. I hope you weren't too scared by the knife throwing incident. Grant, it's perfectly okay. Uh, nothing that a, a trip to A&E uh, won't fix. 
and uh, I'm sure next time you'll find that we are going to conform completely to all health and safety requirements as laid down by the good fr our good friends at the manufacturer Stanley who made the 99E slicer and dicer. Thanks for watching today.